Hey to the Hyborian Warriors and to all fans of Conan, Sword and Sorcery and Superheroes. The name of this video is my statement about the current run of Conan comics by Titan and it is not a good one. Most of you will not agree with me on this topic, especially at the beginning of this video, but I hope that the arguments that I present to you will wake you up to what is happening. But before I start, I have to make a disclaimer here. I know nothing about Jim Zub besides the D&D comics with Minsk and Boo and this Conan run by Titan Comics, and I have no interest in knowing more about him because I recognize the master or the lack of it by his work. In my argumentation, I will outline Conan by his characteristics and beliefs. Then I will show how Conan is dismantled in Conan issue 1 to 3 for the sake of Brissa and contrast it with the Red, Sonia and Conan interaction. And in the end, I will point out where Conan is not treated properly and written not heroically by the writer Jim Zub in the fourth issue of Conan from Titan Comics. So, let us begin by outlining Conan himself. Conan, as written by Robert E. Howard, is a wanderer in a world full of supernatural elements that pose in most cases a direct threat to Conan himself and to other human inhabitants of this Hyborian Age Earth. And since he is the one to end these threats, unlike other characters who failed in previous encounters or attempts, therefore he can be called foremost a survivor and additively in the ancient Greek sense a hero. A hero that's intrinsically motivated by his own inner desire, instead of searching for renown and glory. Robert E. Howard has portrayed Conan as a man who was formed by the nature of his rough and harsh land and by its stubborn people bound upon survival. To survive this world, Conan has few attributes that he brings to the table. First, he is very strong and fast, and by this enduring and durable towards physical trauma. This is given by his height, the genetics for certain quality and quantity of muscles, passed down from the kings of Atlantis and the exercise and selection from living in the harsh lands of Cimmeria. As Conan describes the lands of Cimmeria to Prospero in The Phoenix on the Sword. Perhaps it's the land they live in, answered the king. A gloomier land never was, all of hills, darkly wooded, under skies nearly always grey, with winds moaning drearily down the valleys. Here Conan says indirectly that hunting and fishing is the only way to survive in Cimmeria, since agriculture will not be that productive and so you need to be strong, fast and durable. Second, he is mentally resistant against mental stress like fear of dying or death of people around him that he knew. And this comes from the simple fact that death is a constant companion of Conan, either by his sword or by other people and elements. Conan about his own people to Prospero in The Phoenix on the Sword. They have no hope here or hereafter, answered Conan. Their gods are Krom and his dark race, who rule over a sunless place of everlasting mist, which is the world of the dead. Mitra, the ways of the Aesir were more to my liking. Here, Conan describes his people as mentally stable, even under depressing conditions that do not break or cling to false hope, but rather fight to the end. And this also gives the Cimmerians, like Conan, their religion that Robert E. Howard has flashed out as the belief in Krom the God on the Great Mountain, in the story The Tower of the Elephant. His gods were simple and understandable. Krom was their chief, and he lived on a great mountain, whence he sent forth dooms and death. It was useless to call on Krom, because he was a gloomy, savage god, and he hated weaklings. But he gave a man courage at birth, and the will and might to kill his enemies, which, in the Cimmerian's mind, was all any god should be expected to do. This Krom religion plays an important factor for Conan's view of the world and his acting towards certain things, like the supernatural and is also a reason why Conan knows no fear. His third great attribute is his fighting ability, which with his great strength and speed makes him unbeatable by any man. 
Conan's fighting ability goes beyond the art of handling an axe, sword or bow. It is also the awareness in personal combat and battle. To see where his next enemy is and to dodge and evade incoming attacks is the most crucial ability that lets him survive all the battles and combat situations. This awareness is perhaps the most important ability that sets Conan apart from his own people, besides his desire to wander the world. Robert E. Howard wrote in The Phoenix on the Sword, as he sprained from the wall, his axe dropped an outlaw with a severed shoulder, and the terrible backhand return crushed the skull of another. Swords whined venomously about him, but death passed him by breathless margins. The Cimmerian moved in, a blur of blinding speed. He was like a tiger among baboons as he leaped, sidestepped and spun, offering an ever-moving target, while his axe wove a shining wheel of death about him. The last important fact about Conan is based upon his religion and beliefs, and that is Conan's dislike towards magic and sorcery and overall the supernatural. As previously stated, Conan's god Krom has given Conan at his birth the gifts of courage, the will and might to slay his enemies. So magic, sorcery and the supernatural is always Conan's enemy because it is either directly against him or it cheats or betrays the relation between Conan and Krom. And how will Conan stand before Krom after his death and tell him he had to use a magic sword or rely upon magic, else his enemies would have slain him? Krom will ask him, Didn't I give you the courage, the will and might to slay your enemies? Ah, be gone, you coward, from my mountain and halls to the mists. Wandering lost around the dark land you shall be. So this is Conan, and he is 1. Very strong, fast and durable. 2. Mentally a fortress that will never fall. 3 a superb fighter with great martial arts skills that he has honed all around the world and with a very high understanding and awareness in personal combat and battles. 4. He is disliking and rejecting magic, sorcery and the supernatural. Now to Conan comics run by Jim Zub. He is saved by a woman in a battle and personal combat three times in the first three issues of Conan and he accepts supernatural gifts in the fourth. All this is against what Robert E. Howard has written about Conan. In the fourth issue he is even without a heroic choice that a hero has to make in his quest and this is the sacrifice by choice and not by force or circumstances. So let us go through it one by one. But before this, a second disclaimer. Be aware that I cannot show you the pictures and that I have to paraphrase the written texts because I live in Germany and it can get me into a lot of trouble with its copyright and ownership system. And I don't have the resources for the court dispute. First case of Conan being saved by the Pictish woman Brissa is in the first issue and it happens to be right at the time as the zombies arrive in the outpost. Conan was attacked and grabbed by a zombie from behind which he throws to the ground and smashes its head with the shield. Then he looks down at the destroyed zombie or his shield while one other zombie goes from behind towards Conan with an axe raised over its head. The next picture shows us Conan lying with his hand and knee on the ground and the axe stuck in the shield while Brissa beheads the zombie with a spear. So it seems that Conan has blocked the attack by the zombie but has lost his balance and has fallen to the ground where his hand grasps his sword. This shows us that Conan hadn't looked out and had no awareness of the entire battle situation and his zombie enemies. So he was surprised by the zombie and couldn't fight back against him. Yes, he would have died here, if not saved by the picked woman Brissa, but Conan is allowed to save Brissa here after she has saved him. Brissa is overwhelmed naturally only by over six zombies and despite the zombies holding weapons like axes and holding her on the ground, she is not killed by them like all the others. Instead, she is just brought to the ground and being held down. And since the zombies concentrate on her, Conan is allowed to destroy the zombies from behind. 
This is a typical example where a female character is elevated over a man by lowering his attributes and achievements and setting her attributes and achievements over his. And by this, it is breaking the canon. In this case, it is the canon of Conan, established by a long tradition in the vein of Robert E. Howard's tales, but it is just the beginning of it. The second example of Brissa saving Conan is in the next issue. Conan fights against the big zombie that was the man, Liham the Tree. He is notably different zombie from all the others due to his height, the battle axe that he holds with two hands and swings and the given name. In the text boxes, it is written that his blows are still done with great strength. This indicates that he has done several strikes against Conan, while Conan is just shown to parry one of them. But the honor of destroying this named zombie by beheading goes naturally to Brissa, and by this she saves Conan. This is the second example in just two issues, where the female Brissa gets elevated over the main male protagonist Conan in this story by her achievements that are exceeding his. The third example of Brissa saving Conan is in the third issue of Conan. Conan and Brissa have entered the unholy tower and are now fighting against two lizard man guards and two zombies. Conan is standing before a lizard man and is then knocked prone by just one zombie. But before the zombie can kill Conan, Brissa drives her sword into the chest of the zombie. The sword remains stuck in the zombie as the zombie hits her with his fist and by this is driving her against cell bars. Naturally Conan is allowed here to kill the lizard man and destroy one zombie because Brissa has lost her sword by saving Conan. We can state here very loosely that Conan has saved Brissa. But despite her being surrounded, she was not attacked because as it is written in the text box, she was holding them off. How and why? Nobody knows. I guess it is her female power or she has threatened the zombies by demanding to see the zombie manager of this dark tower if they touch her. This was the example of Conan being degraded by the writer Jim Zub on his martial powers, battle awareness, strength and speed. Even if we presume the flawed assumption that we should have an equal exchange of Brissa and Conan saving each other, so is Brissa still overwhelmingly in the net positive against Conan, as it took six zombies to take her down, while just one zombie was enough for Conan three times in a row, and she has saved Conan three times in contrast to Conan's two, while Conan was not even allowed to destroy the named one. So why is this a flawed assumption? Even if we let out the physical attributes, then Conan still was born and raised to be a warrior, and the only thing Conan has ever done in his life was fighting against men, nature and the supernatural. He has already fought in his early 20s countless enemies and countless battles in foreign lands, with different enemies like undead, eldritch horrors, old gods and wizards. But here Conan is presented like a man who has just taken up a weapon and went to a battle for the first time. While Brissa was just living in her village before it was overrun by the zombies, and keep in mind that losing her village cannot be that long ago since this entire event of her meeting, Conan happens in Aquilonian, north lands that are close to Samaria and the Pictlands. But she is presented here like she has the powers and combat capabilities of Red Sonja. Let us contrast Brissa with Red Sonja. Red Sonja appeared in Conan the Barbarian issue 23 in February of 1973 with the famous Or my name's not Red Sonja. Since Conan was being pursued by a squadron of Turanian riders, you can say that Red Sonja has unwillingly saved Conan with the warriors of Padishan, but we cannot count this case. So the first time Conan was saved by Red Sonja was when he was betrayed and knocked unconscious in a dark alley from behind by some Torians, soldiers disguised as soldiers of Fardishan in the same issue. And as Conan was tied up, Red Sonja entered the house where Conan was held. There she threw a dagger so that Conan could untie himself and help her in the fight against the Torian soldiers. 
The next time that one could consider Red Sonja saving Conan is in the first issue of The Savage Sword of Conan in the story Curse of the Undead Man where Conan fights against four or more armed men. After killing three of them, Conan slips and falls to the ground. This opens Conan up to an attack from the last remaining one and as the last fighter is about to attack Conan, he is attacked from behind and dies. Conan looks up and it is Red Sonja who killed the fighter. Red Sonja says to Conan, Who did you expect to rescue you, if not your old friend Red Sonja? Conan answers, Rescue me? Why, I'd have gutted the pig in another second. I was doing fine by myself, at least until I tripped. Over this, I guess. And Conan then picks up the foul magic MacGuffin that caused him to fall. After these two cases, I couldn't find any other case of Conan being saved by Red Sonja in Conan the Barbarian and the Savage Sword of Conan by Marvel, despite looking up to Conan the Barbarian issue 205 and in Savage Sword of Conan, a co-op between Conan and Red Sonja only appears later in the issue 144. Conan and Red Sonja co-ops are in Conan the Barbarian issues 24, 43, 44, 67, 68, 115, 195, 196, 197, 198, 199, 200, 204, 205 and in none of them Conan is saved by Red Sonja besides this one example that I have already mentioned despite them both fighting side by side in most of the issues. Conan has also saved Red Sonja but this was when she was unconscious so it didn't infringe upon her combat capabilities and neither has Red Sonja infringed upon his combat capabilities when she saved Conan in these two presented examples. So neither Conan nor Red Sonja were made weaker than they are, just to make the other look good. Conan the Barbarian goes downhill under Marvel after the 115 issue, nevertheless Red Sonja and Conan are portrayed nearly always as equals. But this is not happening here in the Jim Zub Conan run. Let us pause here for a moment and thank Roy Thomas for his work with tales written by Robert E. Howard, like Conan and inspired works by Robert E. Howard, like Elric. Overall for his work in the sword and sorcery genre, like Ralph Bakshi's Fire and Ice, and naturally for the creation of Red Sonja. Also since I'm writing this entire script on 22nd of November, thank you Roy Thomas. Thank you for giving us a great time with great heroes and a happy birthday to you sir. Now back again to the main and sad topic. Jim Zub degrades Conan also on another level. It is more difficult to explain because this is on the level of being or existence of Conan and the heroics. As I have already told, the gifts from Krom are what gives Conan his existence on a meta level. The courage, the will and might to slay his enemies. This is a relation and religiosity of Conan that Robert E. Howard has created based upon Conan's character and he described it in The Tower of the Elephant. Therefore Conan and Krom are bound together and should be seen in certain unison. This results in the fact that Conan will never pray to Krom in a pleading manner or whine about his current fate or etc. Because Krom despises it and it is also not part of Conan's character. Conan is making his way in the Hyborian earth with his courage and will and by this he is living the religion of Chrome. This also defines, as I have already stated, Conan's negative relation to magic, sorcery and the supernatural because this is against Chrome's will and gifts. Fun fact, many people think that Conan is an unbeliever but in the entire stories written by Robert E. Howard for the Weird Tales magazine, Krom is mentioned by Conan or the narrator for 97 times, with most of them being Conan saying by Krom or swearing upon Krom. Robert E. Howard's has used by Krom for Conan like many people say by God. So back to the atrocity by Jim Zub in the fourth issue of Conan by Titan and there are two obvious ones. Not that there are less in the previous issues, like the sex scene, but they can be overlooked because they are not that destructive. Conan falls into a pool of water where he meets the apparition of Brule the Spear Slayer that served Kul of Atlantis. Kul is directly Conan's forefather because Conan has an uninterrupted line of fathers to Kul. 
and Conan is promised a reward for now and forevermore by Brule if he avenges the pigs that were cursed. Conan swears he will do so. Then Brule sticks his hand into Conan's chest, who cannot react and looks dumbfounded, like an idiot. Afterwards, Conan is awakened from the comatose state that he previously was after falling into the pool. It doesn't help that Conan seems to try to protest against the hand in his chest, but he still looks like a stuttering idiot that cannot finish a sentence. This may not seem that bad, but remember what I have told you about Conan and Krom. Conan swears when it is important with by Krom. This is utterly binding because he puts his eternal fate on the table and it is also a declaration of his will that he has received at his birth from his god Krom. So, the only gift that Conan can receive after his death is Krom's to give with his approval and Conan exactly knows that he will die one day. Therefore, any supernatural gift from another source then Krom is a betrayal of this relation. Keep in mind that Conan doesn't seem religious, but he always acts according to the religion of Krom. This is due to the fact that Robert E. Howard has aligned Conan's behavior with Krom's religion, because he invented the religion based on Conan's character. Conan's proper response to the plea for vengeance by Brule's spirit would be rather, Keep your rewards for thyself, spirit of Brule. But, by Krom, I shall grant you vengeance. The atrocity committed by Jim Zub doesn't stop there in these panels. After Conan's awakening, Conan is still trapped underwater and following is written on the panels that I will paraphrase. Even if Conan had the ability to free himself of this grip from the source, he wouldn't have enough air left in his lungs to reach the surface, and so accepts the sacrifice his existence for his nation. Now this sounds good, but only for people that do not understand what a hero is. What is a hero? A hero is a paragon of virtues. A hero is someone who makes the choices based upon the virtues of wisdom, courage, justice and fortitude, and Conan had no choice here in any of the aspects. Conan had not made the choice to fall into the pool. Conan had no choice to go into the spirit world of whatever this is, where he meets Brule. Conan had no choice in listening to the spirit of Brule. Conan couldn't make the choice of rejecting Brule's offer on the reward. Conan couldn't even object to having Brule's fist in his chest. And in the end, he hadn't had the choice between going up to get some breath or searching underwater for the source. Conan is not a hero here, he is forced or directed to solve this problem. Or better said, intangible forces direct him to the solution of the problem and it is not the result of his choices, values or conscious actions. In other words, Conan is not the hero here, but the victim of a higher force that is perhaps a mediocre writer constructing a story without understanding of Conan, sword and sorcery and how Robert E. Howard has woven his world. There is a saying that I always use in such a context. Once is a happenstance, twice is a coincidence, three times is enemy action. Conan being saved by Brissa one time in each of the three issues is not a happenstance and neither a coincidence because everything that is written is written by choice, will and design and therefore it is per se an enemy action if it hurts the already established character of Conan and Jim Zub is hurting Conan by ruining him as a survivor through his own power, will and capabilities and making him survive through sheer luck or being saved by Brissa from adversaries that he could not end with his martial powers while she could. Conan survives also because of Brul and not by his own will to overcome this condition. Jim Zub is ruining Conan as a hero that ends an evil by his heroic choices and deeds. Instead, Jim Zub shows Conan as a lucky idiot that happens to stumble across the solution. Therefore, I have to make a choice, and my choice is not to waste my money on this anymore. I will not buy Conan from Titan as long as it is written by Jim Zub because I have no interest in seeing Conan further being degraded and humiliated. 
And if you are a true fan of Conan, you will make the same choice, because Jim Zub will not stop here, instead he will double down on this and it will get even worse over time. And against what others think, I will state that there is nothing magical about Conan that makes a male person into a man if the person starts writing stories about him. You will not magically grow bigger balls, nor gain 20 pounds of muscles, and neither will your voice go down by two octaves. Also, you will not want to pick up a sword and want to conquer the world just because you have written a story with Conan. Conan is literally a literary figure at the mercy of the writer, and the writer ports what is inside of him, like himself, his intelligence and desires, into the work about Conan, and Jim Zub has shown what is inside of him. I have not seen the short-lived Marvel run of Conan, because I knew that they would do something like this in these four issues of Conan. But I have heard that it has happened. So yes, this is just the continuation of degrading Conan, like it was done under Marvel. Or perhaps it is even worse. And the same thing has happened to many male superheroes under Marvel and DC. It was allowed to continue and it is killing the comics shops and US comic industry. This could only happen because the fans stuck to their superheroes until they lost all interest in them. Only then the fans went away one by one instead of giving a clear sign altogether by stopping from buying the comics in a short span of time. Because such things can only happen if the fandom doesn't vote with their wallet against it and speaks out a clear no. Conan's run in comics history was not like that of Superman and Batman because it was interrupted for at least two times recently unlike the previously mentioned superheroes. So yes, there is no reason to uphold a continuity for the sake of it alone. Also there were many bad Conan stories, but they posed no threat to Conan since they didn't attack Conan himself. And a good character can survive a bad story, but not a bad characterization. So perhaps it would be better for Conan to stop this run for at least five years or until people get sane again and learn to write good stories for him and to respect Conan's character as he was created by Robert E. Howard. I do know that I do not make many friends myself with this video, especially not with Jim Zub, Titan Comics or Frederick Malmberg, but the truth is the truth and Conan and the writing by Robert E. Howard is a legacy that needs to be protected. Therefore, I will speak out the truth even if it hurts me. For now I will say to all true Hyborian warriors, Conan, sword and sorcery and superhero fans, take care and hope to see you later. I will be back very soon with more sword and sorcery, Robert E. Howard and Conan. But first, I have to make one short intro in my fashion, else I will be dissatisfied with the upcoming videos.